Good evening, everyone. Um, we're going to call the, this meeting to order. It is now uh, it is now six thirty seven p.m. April six, twenty twenty three, and this is a public meeting of the City of Portland Por Police Accountability Commission Subcommittee on Board Membership. At the moment, we do not have our interpreters, but as they come as they come on, we will intervene them once they come in. So moving to the next slide. Thank you. The city also offers ASL interpretation, which is being provided by, do we have our um, ASL interpreters here? Nope. Not quite okay. yet, but they'll get here in a couple as they'll well. Be, okay, we apologize for that. Okay, the city supports access to the meeting of the Police Accountability Commission and can provide other language support as well. Please email in advance of future public meetings, meetings either as a response to a public meeting notice or directly to policeaccountability at portlandoregon.gov to ask for other access assistance, including interpretation and to other languages. This meeting is a public meeting subject to the City of Portland Administrative Code in Oregon State Law and is being recorded. For this meeting, the chat function, it, the chat function is enabled for commission members to communicate with each other. Members of the public will be able to ask questions using the Zoom's Q&A feature. As the, as the commissioners are presenting and or discussing things, if attendees have questions, please feel free to submit them through the Q&A. We hope to use this feature to help guide our conversation during the meeting and future meeting and agenda topics. We would like to be clear that not all questions will be answered during the meeting, but if answered, both the question and answer will be visible to you and will become part of the meeting record. To access this feature, just click on the Q&A icon, the middle of your screen. Now we'll go into the land acknowledgement. I would like to turn it over to co-chair Obi. Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Obi. I'm one of the co-chairs and I'm gonna read the land acknowledgement. Um, the PAC uses the land acknowledgement on display at City Hall. We acknowledge that the rivers, lakes, streams, and land of the lower Willamette River rest upon the occupied territories of the Multnomah, Wasco, Cowlitz, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Chinook, Swalton, Kalapia, Malala, and many other tribes. We recognize the many villages, traditions, cultures, and relationships that existed along the river since time immemorial. We recognize these tribes stewarded these lands and rivers since time immemorial for future generations. We recognize and undertake responsibility for the destruction of the river and land, of traditional food sources, sacred places, and multifaceted ways of life. We acknowledge the economic and social values that enabled the harm to the river, including systemic racism, classism, and other systems of oppression that perpetuated harm against Black, Indigenous, and immigrant communities along the river. With this acknowledgement, we commit to honoring and learning from the past and working towards a more equitable and sustainable future for the Lower Willamette River. We commit to seeking solutions that acknowledge the inequities of past socioeconomic policies and the harm done to people and our relationships to these lands and waters. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Now we would um, go to the community agreement. We ask that you all take a moment to review community agreements part one. Thank you, next slide. Thank you, next slide. Do we all commit to the following, the community agreements for today's meeting? 
and to gently call in our colleagues and collaborators if needed. I show of hand. Okay, thank you. I'm moving forward. I will now pass it over to the co-chair Obi to discuss the timeline. Thank you. Um, this meeting is part of the Police Accountability Commission structure and details phase of work, which focuses on the form of the new system. Future phases of work will develop how the new system relates to the rest of city government and the transition plan from our current system to the new one. The commission will work until August 31st, 2023, and will present all proposed changes to the city council for their consideration and approval. Next slide. This slide shows the outcome documents for the structure and details phase based on the agenda and scope approved by the, uh, the commission. This subcommittee focuses on how the board's membership will be structured, including board size, appointment, qualifications, reasons for removal, and more. This slide uh, is a current project plan for the structure and details phase of the Police Accountability Commission's work. It will be updated as needed throughout this phase of work. The slide is for the members of the public to be able to understand how the commission gets from now to the end of the phase, which focuses on identifying areas of agreement among commission members as to the form the new system will take. Today's meeting fits into the light blue boxes with the red border near the middle of the screen. Following today, here are the upcoming meetings of the PAC. We'd like to highlight the subcommittee has one more meeting scheduled after today. As of now, it is the next Monday, April 10th at 7 p.m. The next full commission meeting is Thursday, April 13th, which will include a briefing with City Commissioner Renee Gonzalez. We have an open community Q&A at the East Portland Community Center um, this Saturday, April 8th from 12 to 2 p.m. Today's meeting agenda includes time for members to update on what they worked on since their last meeting on March 27th, followed by co-chairs um, introduction of the new draft and discussion on the text of the draft areas of agreement on board membership. There is also an open public comment period on the agenda. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. At this moment, I would like to call um, co-chairs and commission members to um, discuss and introduce your work from March 27th to today. Staff for co-chair can also note if people are not here and sent any updates in writing. We will now pass it on to Co-Chair Obi to describe the new draft areas of, agree of agreement on board membership document. Sure. So thank you. Um, where we last left off last meeting, um, we had gone through most of our document, um, except for the quorum section, and then the three uh, phases that weren't um, quite submitted yet. Those have all been uh, to some form submitted, so we are going to go through what we haven't before, um, which would be quorum and then size of the board, um, and compensation, and then um, the onboarding process and training. Uh, so four more sections, then hopefully we can get started with the uh, um, draft areas of agreement. And since we've already made comments on a lot of it, um, so we can get to what we had just discussed before and hopefully move forward to um, hopefully produce a document by Monday evening. Okay, thank you, um, Co-Chair Obi. Do we have any other commissioners that would like to share um, about your work that you have done from March 27th to today? No? Okay, thanks. Moving along, um, we will now move to discussing items for inclusion in the draft areas of agreement on board membership and walk through the outline documents and some other resources as we do. We ask you to follow all normal discussion rules. Please be brief each time you speak, even though you can speak multiple times, please be facilitated and remember that we use weighted stack in our discussions. Finally, please be forward looking in your comments. Would the co-chairs like to get the discussion started? Co-chair Obi. Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, no, um, thank you staff for putting the uh, document up. Um, I think, 
just structure wise, it's great that uh, size of the board and panels are there. Um, we'll notice there's a definition section. I know staff will go over this too. So you can just, I think, start at the top and then skip to what we haven't read and then go for the final pass, hopefully. I think uh, size of the board as well as compensation kind of feed into some of the things that we had partially or have not discussed yet. And sorry, uh, I'm going to do a lot of reading, but could you hand it to the staff? I think you're going to say something before we get started. Yes, staff. Yeah, so um, just a quick uh, run through of the definitions. This is not done in any way. Uh, actually, two notes. First, um, we're, we're going to be operating on the sort of five minute rule. If there's anything that, that can be figured out within five minutes, um, then we'll do that. And then if not, um, we'll just flag it for further discussion, circle back to it. It'll still get discussed by the subcommittee, but it's important to get a full pass through the document um, and then see what, what remains. And then the other thing is just as we're going through this, the, the full definition is not here yet, but um, the, the key distinction between uh, the terms panel and subcommittee, which you'll see throughout the first section of this document, is that a panel is empowered to make decisions directly as under the officer accountability document. And there's a lot more detail there. We'll post the link in the um, in the chat so that um, anyone following along can can um, see what exactly a panel can do. Uh, and whereas a subcommittee works similar to this subcommittee, where it's um, you know coming up with uh, something and and that would get discussed by the full um, oversight board the same way that one of these subcommittees develops uh, a document that's eventually discussed and approved by the full commission. So that. Just a rough uh, definition there um, as we go. And I will pass it back to Co-Chair Obi. Thank you, uh, staff. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, go through this section, which would be size of the board and panel sizes. So uh, number one, size of the board. The oversight board shall have 25 members. Do we have any discussion um, on the number of uh, board membership at 25? Do we agree that it should stay at 25? Should it be less or should it be more? Um, Commissioner Cherie. Um, I'm just curious, I'm not saying we should change it in any way, but I'm just curious what did um, the other um, places like San Diego and um, other ones have for their number of board members? staff or any other um, commissioners have a response to that? Um, Commissioner Cameron? Yes, hi. Um, I, I saw, I looked into that and there, I saw numbers all over the place from about five or six people up to the highest that was around 25 or 27. Um, and, and I think was that San Diego? Does anyone else know? I, I feel I feel like San Diego was the one that had the highest number that was about that. Um, I, I, in my mind, I'm a little worried about having small of a of a group. Um, so I, you know, a while ago I thought you know a much larger number would be great. You know, thirty or 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 so, but. But it looked like San Diego had like 27. Hey, Commissioner um, Sophia. I, I was just going to say pretty much what <laughs> Commissioner um, Cameron said. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sophia. Commissioner Angie. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I just wanted to, um, just basing it on the size of our commission being 20 people and struggling here and there because it's so much work um, is kind of the reason that I lean towards having 25 because this new board is going to have, if you can believe it, even more work than us, I think. And, um, and they're volunteers, uh, relatively volunteers. So having more brain power um, to choose to to choose from to work on all these projects and these subcommittees, I think is um, is a wise choice. So that was that was my thinking. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Angie, Commissioner Co-Chair Obi. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm in the comment section. It was confirmed that San Diego had 25. So uh, no, that's where a good number came from. I think a lot of people were kind of floating between that 20 and 30 range. The 25 seems good. Great, thank you. So do we have uh, a consensus on 25? Sounds good. So um, can we move on? We okay with moving on? Okay. Yeah, I think that's fine. Thank you. Um, staff, I think our interpreters um, are here. Um, staff? That, that is correct. So just a quick note um, while we're here that there uh, is Spanish language uh, interpretation available. I'm sorry to put um, you on the spot, uh, <laughs> interpreter Ariel, but if you could read the, the um, information in Spanish for those who might need it, and then we can get that set up. Okay. Um... Um, I'm not sure if you have that information, but you're muted. Uh, the, inform the first uh, paragraph uh, about the interpreters. And... Uh, yeah, just um, I think, let's see here. It's section eight, logistical announcement, including interpretation. Okay, yes, yes. Yes, the, this uh -huh. meeting is, yes. Uh -huh. uh, so you want me to start uh, now? Yes, Yeah, please. could you, if you could just okay. read that information. Uh -huh. Thank you. Esta reunión es una reunión pública sujeta a la ley del estado de Oregon y las normas administrativas de la ciudad de Portland y se grabará. Uh, contamos con interpretación en español. Al acceder a la interpretación en español, verá la transmisión de video de los oradores, pero la transmisión de audio será reemplazada por el intérprete. Para acceder a este servicio, haga clic en interpretación de idiomas en los controles de la reunión del Zoom en la parte inferior de la pantalla y seleccione español. Thank you. Are we ready to proceed, staff, into the document? Sure, yeah. Okay, thanks. Can you put the documents on the screen? Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right, number two uh, is alternates. And the note is move up from the recruitment appointment processes that we kind of discussed before. Thank you. Do we have any discussion, comment, feedback, questions? Yeah, I, I think okay. we'll need a second look at, um, okay. we'll kind of discuss it too, but that's kind of a scenario for before. So okay. I'll just move on with number three, with panels. The oversight board may create panels for hearings, for due process, and for appeals. Um, a, hearings panels. Panels shall be no smaller than five board members. In more serious cases, these panels shall have more members than in other cases. For cases involving the use of deadly force, panels shall be no smaller than 10 members. The panels shall be created to ensure diversity based on life experience, race, gender, and other factors, including, if appropriate, when members are nominated by different people or entities. Um, I'll continue on the B, due process or louder mill hearings. When, um, when discipline is imposed by the board, a panel made up of board members shall hold a separate due process or louder, louder mill hearing. Um, this panel shall be no smaller than five board members. And appeals panels. Appeals will be heard by a different panel of board members than heard the original complaint, except in cases in which the basis for the appeal is a discovery of new information. In either situation, this will be referred to as an appeals panel. Um, sub point one. If the basis for the appeal is the discovery of new information, members of the original hearings panel will form the appeals panel. If a member of the original panel is unavailable, a board member who is not part of the original hearing may be assigned to the hearing. And sub point two, if there is any other basis for the appeal, the oversight board shall create a new appeal panel consisting of at least five members. 
Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Um, do we have any comments, discussions, feedback, questions, or a point of clarification? Commissioners? Staff? A uh, quick note on the content, but before that, just wanted to flag that uh, ASL interpreters are here. Apologies for the delay on that process. Uh, and then just a quick note on this, the footnotes have not yet been added, but this is a very, very similar to the text, as you may recall, from the officer accountability. Um, there are a couple, uh, two changes noted, but but uh, other than that, um, yeah, I'm happy to scroll because it's a long section. Thank you, Steph. May I ask Kevin, um, the ASL interpreter, um, to go on camera and those who are in need of ASL yeah, uh, interpretation. Chris, yeah, Christine, um, at, as ASL one, ASL interpreter one, she was actually going to start. Okay, thank you, Christine. Appreciate it. Thanks. No uh, we also have a Spanish interpreter, Carolina. It's also here. Thank you all for joining us. So moving right along, co-chair uh, staff. I see staff hand is raised. Just left it up. Sorry. Okay. No problem. No worries. Um, do um, regarding to section three on panels, do you have any members of the subcommittee that has any comments, feedback, questions regarding panels? Seeing that there are no hands raised, can we move forward? Thank you. Moving to section four subcommittees or subcommittees thing the oversight board shall be empowered to create bylaws that allow for the creation management and elimination of subcommittees some committees must include at least five full members of the oversight board thank you co-chair obi any discussion feedback comments questions or points of clarification Seeing that there are none, may we move forward? Qualifications and selection criteria, Co-Chair Obi, start. Sure. Um, so qualifications and selection criteria. Well, um, so number one, makeup of the board. The advisory board shall have community members who have uh, been impacted by over-policing practices. Um, the advisory board shall have community members that have worked with populations directly um, affected by overplacing. Um, just sub note there for populations can be plural or the population. Um, see, the advisory board shall have members who have experience with conducting investigations, case review, and auditing. And D, the board shall have members who have experience doing community outreach. Um, it is important to center the voices of the community when implementing changes to the oversight board. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Do we have any comments, feedback, questions, or point of clarification from fellow commissioners? Seeing that there are none, may we move forward? Thank you. Moving forward, Co-Chair Obi. Number two, uh, subject matter expertise. The advisory board shall include people experienced with the police accountability experience, legal knowledge, for instance, public defense lawyers and civil rights lawyers. Other and B, other professional exp expertise shall be considered. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Any discussion, comments, questions? Seeing that there are none, may we move forward? Sure. Thank you. Co-Chair Obi. Number three, restrictions. Um, so charter section 2-1003, um, restrictions on board membership. Um, people currently employed 
by a law enforcement agency and their immediate family members are not eligible for service on the board. People who were formerly employed by a law enforcement agency are not eligible for service on the board. And then B, board members cannot be members of any other city of Portland advisory group and parentheses related to police slash policing. Okay, I see a hand raise. Um, Staff? Yeah, so uh, there's a comment thread uh, on the right here, uh, which was something to circle back to. And there is a request for legal guidance, and that's part of it. But the other part of it may be helpful too, which is what is the um, essentially intended? How does the subcommittee and eventually how does the commission uh, define law enforcement agency in terms of? you know, what other, where does that restriction, how broad is it, is a question that that um, needs to, to be answered. And there may be legal guidance on that coming, but it also may be um, helpful for the subcommittee to kind of explore to what degree um, a DA or prosecutor's office is what it says in the comment. There was also a question raised about uh, corrections, um, uh, things like that. Certainly, it, it definitely includes at least PPV, but beyond that. Yeah, um, I think so. anyone has thoughts on that? Co-chair Obi. Yeah, I think uh, last time when we discussed that, um, there was actually a website you were directed to that had like what entails um, a uh, law enforcement, which like up into included like someone who had served in the DA's office. I think maybe modeling off of you know what's been previously established. Um, I know you can leave it up to leave it up to the board itself, but um, moderating what was previously established of like people in the legal field versus people who are directly in law enforcement um, seems like a reasonable thing. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Do we have any other commissioners um, that would like to add any comments, questions, feedback? Seeing that there are none, may we move forward? Thank you. Co-Chair Obi. Okay. Um, so um, the next section is recruitment and appointing process, including representation. Um, so number one, members of the board shall live, work, play, attend school, or worship in the city of Portland for at least 12 months. Do we have any comments, feedback, questions regarding this section? Thank you. Moving along, may we move forward? Sure. Thank you. Um, number two, board members assisted by a community outreach staff member shall be available to further recruitment efforts for vacant board positions. Any comments, feedback, questions? Seeing that there are none, may we move forward? Uh, sure. In number three, mm -hmm. um, in addition to seated board membership positions, alternate members shall be recruited and appointed in the case that there are vacancies for both short and long-term absences. Alternate members shall be recruited from among former members of the oversight board who are not removed for cause. Alternates shall provide historic, historical context and institutional memory to discussions of the oversight board. Alternates may not vote. Thank you, staff. So the this is a, a potential change uh, proposed, uh, and, and perhaps Commissioner Sophia might want to speak to that because it was uh, proposed by Commissioner Sophia. But so the, the part up above was discussed in the, the first half of number three was discussed on March 27th, um, and the subcommittee has not yet discussed the second uh, half of it that's shown in the blue track changes here. So the subcommittee would need to eventually uh, come to consensus on whether or not to make this change. 
Thank you. Commissioner Sophia, would you like to add or elaborate on it? Sure. Um, I, I was also concerned with um, some of our institutional knowledge um, leaving the commission and the, all, the issues with alternatives not having experience and, and possibly um, sitting on boards or whatever and participating without being called. So I thought it would be a better, um, I think it would be a good idea for us to have some of the past board members be um, uh, used as alternatives. That way we can keep our institutional knowledge and they, it'll be a little easier for them to step in. They don't have to be vetted again because they think that it already it just kind of makes the process more concise. And also, thank you, Commissioner Sophia. Commissioner Angie. Thank you. I want to, um, I want to reiterate that I, um, I, um, and I heard uh, I was in discussions with um, Commissioner Sophia today also, and and she su had suggested like an emeritus list when people are done with their board position, which I think is a really, really good idea. Um, not that we want only one set of people always being on this board, but having that historical knowledge of the of the conversation, the previous conversations and situations, I think is very valuable if we are looking for alternates. Thanks. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Um, thank you. Um, I have a couple of points to make. Um, one is going to take a Q&A question, and it said, can alternates not vote? But if they're step, I would say that, to clarify just that last final sentence, if they are moved up from an alternate position to filling in um, the standard role of one of the 25 members in absence, then they are voting members. It's like they'd be treated as a member. Um, and then definitely like the idea of the institutional knowledge with alternates. I would say that just like if we could make the language include other people who aren't necessarily um, um, emeritus, or like include people who might wanted to have or might have applied, but not made it to the final 25, that they might be an alternate as well someone who could start the process like it, I think all the alternates don't necessarily have to be emeritus members but uh just so that's stated pretty clearly is that new sentence which I agree with does sound like it's just going to be people who have already served too thank you co-chair Obi is there any further discussions or comments feedback or questions um commissioner Sharif what if there was a happy medium <clears throat> in the alternate members shall be recruited from among former members of the oversight board who were not removed for cause? Maybe in, I love what Sophia is saying about preserving the historical aspect. People know what went on before, they understand relationships, history, not repeating itself in bad ways. But I don't want to limit, um, you know, if there was somebody that wants to be an alternate who hadn't served before, I wouldn't want it to be limited in the sense of um, what if a lot of alternates were burned out and you didn't, if they didn't want to come back. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is I wouldn't want to limit it by only just selecting from members that were former, that's my two cents. Thanks, Commissioner. So um, is there any strong opposition to this change? I think that Commissioner Sophia had her hand up. Sorry. Oh, sorry, um, Commissioner Sophia? I'll pass for a moment. Thank you. Okay. 
So is there any strong opposition to the proposed change? Okay. Is there a general agreement? Co-chair Obi, you want to speak or you're raising for the general agreement? I, don't, I just like to speak. I, can, I, I don't have strong opposition to the statement. Just like, I don't know if adding a text, um, like okay. maybe in the start of the sentence to kind of bridge the gap for it. And um, you know, definitely uh, Commissioner Sophia, please let me know if there's any changes to this from what I say. But if you started it and said, along with other qualified members of the Portland or of the community, comma, also members shall also be recruited from among former members. Yeah, it was exactly in some sort of way of saying everyone is available to be part of this, but specifically we like to hone in on having previous members be be a part of it. Thank you, Kutcher Obi. Now may we move forward and possibly circle back to this? Um, Commissioner Sophia? Yes, um, I'm just, I wanted to say I was, I understand wanting to, have new, new members, new people if possible, because you never know. Um, like you said, it might be some burnout. Um, but my thought was, um, just give me a second to figure this out. I'm trying to think of a different language. I'm sorry. I'm just going to put it in the chat. Thank you. May we move forward and we can possibly circle back? Thank you. Um, number four, uh, successors to an unexpired term shall be appointed by approval of council for the remainder of the term. Thank you. Do we have any comments, feedback, questions? Seeing that there are none, may we move forward? Um, number five, recruitment efforts for the new board shall should include, but not be limited to free or paid advertisements on television, radio, print, or digital media directed at the eligible public. It should clearly state that these are not police bureau or full-time city of Portland positions. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Any discussion, comments, feedback? Seeing that there are none, may we move forward. Number six, at minimum, committee staff shall solicit applications to fill vacancies in the committee's membership with the help from the Office of Community and Civic Life, the seven neighborhood coalition offices, mayor and commissioner's offices, PBB advisory committees, and the general public. Thank you. Any comments? Questions, feedback, uh, Commissioner Angie. Thank you. Um, I just wanted. I wanted to. Um, I am just wondering. The Office of Equity is that. I'm. I'm so sorry. I'm not totally familiar with all the bureaus, but is equity under is bureau of or under um, under. Uh, Office of Community and Civic Civic Life. I guess this is a question for staff. Thank you. Staff? It's not. Um, and the Civic Life is, uh, the, the, some of these names have changed. The Neighborhood Coalitions, there's a, there's a few names that have changed since uh, this code was was written. So it may be helpful to, to update that, but no, it, it's not. It's called the Office of Equity and Human Rights and it's a, a separate bureau. Thank you. I would I would like to add that in here and um, maybe update the office Office of Community and Civic Life. I'm not I, I, because I'm sorry. I know they do change very quickly, so I'm not sure what to do with that. But I do want to want to make sure that we include the Office of Equity and Human Rights. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Angie. Okay. Um, 
Okay, we'll come back to that. Your comment, um, Commissioner Sophia is noted. We'll circle back to that at that. Thank you. Um, may we move forward or do we have any further questions or comments regarding six? Staff? Yeah, so we would need to, um, we would need to resolve this one. Um, uh, we don't need to worry about this. The the is not, it's just a typographical change, but to add this um, phrase in, we need to ask if there's consensus to do that. Yes, yes, okay. So do we, do we have any strong opposition to this amendment to six by adding the Office of Equity and Human Rights? Do we have a general agreement? Thank you, may we move forward? Okay, number seven. The board may create a nominating committee for refer um, to refer applicants for board membership to the city council for appointment. Thank you. Do we have any comments? Feedback? Questions? Uh, seeing that there are none, may we move forward? Okay. Uh, number now, number eight. Uh, applicants shall be screened for potential conflicts of interest. Any comments, feedbacks, feedback or questions? Seeing that there are none, may we move forward? Number nine, or new sub point number nine, or new point number nine. The new board's members shall be appointed by city council. The mayor, while not directly voting for the appointment of nominees, can forward any suggestions or concerns to the city council. Um, you want to go to A? There, that, that, that's just a new. Um, okay. Some point, yeah. Okay. Any uh, comments? Feedback, questions? Seeing that there are none, may we move forward? All right, number 10. Council shall review applications of nominees to the committee and vote whether to approve each appointment. Thank you. Any comments? Feedback, questions? Seeing that there are none, we're gonna take a short break. We're gonna pause here, take about a five to seven minute break. But before we do, we have staff has their hand raised. Staff? Yeah, just the, the quick note that there is a comment that needed to uh, be discussed at some point. Um, and maybe we could do that before or after the break at your discretion, facilitator Corinne. Just wanted to sure. make a missed. Yes, let's go ahead and um, if it's okay with the commissioners and co-chair Obi that we address the comment before, before the break. Um, would you like to read it or Commissioner Cameron? I mean, Casey, oh, Casey, this he's is what he's, doing. Yeah, he's not here. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. um, so um, Casey has suggested adding a timeline for council to vote on nominations uh, for, um, to the board Number of board, number of meetings, number of months, et cetera. Do we have any comments, questions, or feedback to Commissioner Casey's amendment? I do remember. Oh, oh Commissioner Cherie. Yeah. Please. Sorry. <laughs> I'll get this figured out. Um, I do remember when he brought that up. What he what was what he was saying specifically about was like we wouldn't want the position to go a very long term without being filled just because not a lot of attention is being paid to it or something um and but i wouldn't know like what other boards do would would like with respect to the number of meetings number of months etc um it's 
I, I wish that Casey could answer this in that would he have preferred that it be 30 days, 90 days, uh, within 120 days, something like that? I don't know the answer to that. Okay, any other comments or oh, Commissioner Angie? Hi, I, th I know that um, I'm, I'm sure that staff knows how long it takes to get something on the council's agenda. Um, so I, it, it does take a little bit to get something on the council's agenda, and I'm not sure if it has to have two readings. I know that other things that I had worked on in the past um, had to have two readings, so that might take like up to two months. But um, but uh, if staff could answer that question, that would be very good. Staff? Yeah, um, in, in getting there's there's sort of two different timelines there. One is actually getting something on the council agenda, which can it, it, there's four or five different ways to do it, depending on what type of agenda item it is. Um, this would be a resolution, so it does not need a second reading. Appointments are, are through resolutions or reports usually. So um, it, it wouldn't need a second reading. And so that, that timeline is uh, somewhere between a few weeks would be kind of the uh, the upper end. The, the, the thing that can take longer, though, is, is um, council needs time to determine who they want to appoint. So uh, that, com you know, they have uh, restrictions on, on council members meeting because of public meetings law, and then it just takes time with other priorities for them to, to talk about things. And, and that's not as predictable um, for, it's kind of case by case and, and situation by situation. I don't feel uh, qualified to give a definitive answer on that, but um, depending on the method that, that something takes to get, uh, how it's on the agenda in terms of type of document and where on the agenda it is of council that that can take it's not months it's it's more uh likely to be measured in weeks um but before that happens it's usually um that council would need to it is the way that this is happening they need to discuss and determine um as they did with the appointments to the, the pac they have to having to discuss who would um who they want to appoint so that that can take time and i i, I wouldn't be able to predict Thank you, staff. Um, do we have any additional information? I mean, additions or feedback? Um, Commissioner Angie. I propose um, that we add language that says, um, what, what was it? Um, up to um, board member, I'm sorry, I didn't tell, um, a timeline of up to 45 days and have more discussion from there. Thank you, Commissioner Angie. Do we have any comments, feedback, questions regarding Commissioner Angie's um, amendment? Co-Chair Co Obi? Yeah, I think that's 45 days seems like a reasonable time frame to get things done. It seems like a gap of what well, likely only be a handful of meetings for the new board. Um, to get something filled like you know, up to 45 hopefully much sooner than that um i'm not exactly sure how um how quickly something like this we get done in the city council and especially in a new form of the city council but 45 days seems like a very reasonable middle number thank you co-chair uh Obi. we are now at five minutes of this discussion we're going to take one more um comment uh commissioner angie I'm sorry. I just having the within 45 days or what I was thinking. I'm sorry. So never mind. I, uh, so I like having the timeline of within 45 days. Not having. I mean, we're not going to put an ultimatum in there, obviously, but um, hopefully it will stay within that 45 days. Thank you. Um, before we move on to our break, is are we okay with our amendments and requests, and we can move on to the next subject when we come back? Thank you. So we're going to now take a, a how we feel five, seven minute break. Let's take seven minutes. Seven minutes is good. Welcome back, everyone. Okay, staff. Okay. 
Okay. Compensation, Co-Chair Obi. Okay, thanks everyone coming back. Compensation, this is one of the new sections. I believe we'll have a lot of discussion for it. Um, so compensation, oversight board members shall receive compensation for their services. A, financial compensation. Board members shall have financial compensation for their duties during their term of service. Financial compensation in the amount of the current hourly wage of the mayor of Portland, Oregon, for meetings and other public services. In, in sub point two, an additional annual stipend no less than the maximum allowed under the Federal Volunteer Protection Act, currently $500 per year, shall be provided for duties and activities to support the board during um, the between uh, during, between public meetings. Sub point three, financial compensation rates shall be adjusted based on the Federal Employment Cost Index or ECI annually. Adjustments are not subject to pay freezes. And sub point four, additional compensation, financial or other, may be available for special services approved by the board members. Thank you, Co-Chair um, Obi. Uh, do we have any comments or feedback? I think um, that we'd like to add or share regarding financial compensation. Co-Chair Obi. Um, yeah, just some questions on this too, because you know, I think we're going to money wise with like 20 board members. I think this will be a discussion along with the other subcommittee too. So it might be something that we have to narrow down here and get into the full commission. But like, do we know how much the current mayor of Portland, Oregon makes and uh, what the salary changes might be considered in the next iteration of uh, the city council? And then with that financial wage, like, are they now like legally wise? If they're a waged employee, like does that make them a part-time employee? Because I imagine they're going to run into some sort of yeah, exactly 149, and then you know we can reverse that. And considering a Portland mayor does 40, 40 hours a week, then relative, but that much money is that going to now make them a um, like some sort of employee? And then like, do we have to redo the wording when we said these people are not employees? Um, of the city of Portland, even though like the money is going to be flowing from like one way or another, it might might be like a kind of a higher level question for later on. But I just want to make sure it gets doesn't get uh if like we're linking wages to something that the city like does that make them part of the city now? Thank you, Co-Chair Ob. Uh, staff or anyone have any response to um, Co-Chair Ob's question? Or statement. Okay, moving on to Commissioner Sophia. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say I as a board member, um as part of the the board, you're not considered a city employee. I mean, that's in the um it's in the charter. It's supposed to be totally separate and independent. So that's as best I can answer it at this point. Commissioner Angie. Um, from my historical um, people that are on um, uh, on commissions and and um, and advisory committees are not considered and and. Uh, are not considered city employees. It's not. Um, it's not a daily. Um, it's. It's not part of the daily work of this of the city of Portland, basically. So we're not going to be getting badges to um, to or I'm sorry, not us, but the board will not be getting badges um, for the buildings, most likely, and they're not going to. They're not going to be. Cons they're not going to get um, a city of Portland um, number uh, in the system of of all employees. So. I, um, from my history, I am not an expert on HR, though, for the city of Portland. Okay, I see staff hand is raised, and I also see um, Sarah Ames with 
the city attorneys? Yeah, with uh, co-chair's permission, if I could uh, bring in uh, Deputy City Attorney Sarah Ames to help with that. That'd be awesome. Thank you, uh, Sap. Thank you, Sarah. Can you hear me now? Um, I don't see my picture up. So anyway, maybe I had my camera off. Um, I I would like to do some further research into this. Um, there are rules that go well beyond the city about who is considered an employee, how much you can pay a volunteer before they become an employee, um, who's considered an employee versus a contractor, which is another option. So there's a lot of very complicated law that uh, affects this area. Um, you know, as I believe it was Commissioner Angie said, you know, most board members are not considered employees. Most board members are not paid $75 an hour either. Um, and so I, there's just a little bit of a question about that um, in some of the tests about whether you're an employee or a contractor. Um, the payment, um, if you're paid by the hour, it's more likely that you are paid as an employee, if you're paid by the, you know, the work delivery product, and there's not as much direction on how you do the product, more likely to be a contractor. So there's a lot of factors going into compensation of um, potential board members that I would like to um, get more guidance on how you'd like to frame the question, the legal question, so that I can deliver advice that gets to, um, you know, real feedback on what you can and cannot do. I need to know what you want to do um, within that context and then kind of uh, then offer you some advice on that. Thank you, Deputy Attorney, City Attorney Ames. Um, Commissioner Sophia? I just had another question if, if um, the city attorney can look into this for us as well. Um, I, my assumption is we're con the board members will be considered um, public officials. Is there some um, rules on that as well is where I'm going? So it's just all a question I have, thank you. Um, even volunteer board members who are such as yourselves are considered public officials under government ethics law and some of those other, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, you're obviously subject to public meetings law and public records law and also um, government ethics law. So there is a lot of um, Hi. Oh. Uh, you'll get my picture soon. Um, so yeah, thank you for asking that question. I think if you um, were able to work with Samira and really frame some of these questions, you know, it doesn't have to happen right on the spot this moment. Um, I'd be happy to look into them. He has kind of, he's developing a list of things that I need to follow up and get, offer you advice on. Some of it is not my direct area of expertise. So I need to check in with others in the city attorney's office. So I can't offer, you know, immediately off the hip some substantive answers, unfortunately, but I'll do the best I can. Thank you. Uh, let's see, uh, Commissioner Obi, Co-Chair Obi. Um, no, thank, thanks guys. And I know this is gonna be a hot topic discussion for us and then for the full commission and then for the legal people who are gonna help us out um, at the end of this process, we're getting this uh, cemented into um, law. Um, I would say that, while it's like this definitely up for discussion, um, I think we have to be prepared to not have this done, you know, after Monday. So uh, we're about the end of Monday because it is very complex and probably a few layers of law that we might not be able to put in by the time we finish this document. So, I mean, overarching, we believe that the board should be compensated. Um, this makes it seem like we compensate on an hourly wage, but also on our idea in our head is our idea in our head is by job or like by case or by thing done. Um, I think there's a group will end up being a grant on that. It, we might need to convert it to that to get this moved on per se, because like if we get um, bogged down into details and whether or not, you know, what makes someone an employee or what makes someone not an employee by the end of Monday, it would push us back a bit far. So just something to consider. Um, I definitely like what's written. I like the discussion, but we don't want to get bogged down too much. 
Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Um, staff? Yeah, so by Monday, which is currently the last scheduled meeting, uh, we'll see if there's another opportunity for more time uh, for the subcommittee. And if that's possible, we'll definitely let subcommittee members know um, how we can achieve that without necessarily uh, the whole project plan changing and timelines. Um, <clears throat> additionally, there's the option, if if not everything, as, as Co-Chair Obi mentioned, if not everything can be resolved, there is the option of referring things without recommendation, which is essentially you know, we're not asking, uh, the, the subcommittee would be saying, quote, we're not asking to be the full commission to be deferential to this part just to discuss it, end quote. So that's an option too for whatever portion of this can't be resolved. And then just another quick note for each, the subcommittee and for Deputy City Attorney Ames, the, there, as as you're going through this, there, there are going to be parts in the next few sections that might help, uh, of the subsections of compensation that might help with um, narrowing that field. And for the members of the subcommittee, it, it, I think it would be helpful to, as Co-Chair Obi mentioned, get a, a feel for the overall. And there's this is a, a relatively long section and a relatively important one. So just trying to ensure that there's some uh, opinions given by the subcommittee on these questions as we go through the rest of uh, Part D, which is compensation in the next few minutes here. Does that make sense? Thanks. Thank you, staff. Do we have any further discussion on the financial compensation at this moment? Any other um, points of clarification, questions, feedback, or comments? I think I saw a hand raised. Um, Commissioner Cameron. Yeah, I just wanted to also agree that we, you know, um, some sort of compensation should be put forward. And, and I like the hourly thing. I also like, um, there was a, a, I saw something somewhere that said there's like, I don't know, $50 per meeting or training that I saw in, I think Atlanta, um, as an example, but, but I, I agree that everyone, that these, uh, the board members should be compensated and, um, does it. Thank you, Commissioner Cameron. Um, Commissioner Sheree. Yeah, I was just going to say I've had quite a bit of experience with employee versus consultant, and um, I I think could we try to clarify now today regard for the lawyer's sake anyway regarding uh, consultant versus employee um it sounds to me like these people would need to be available kind of seven days a week to take complaints and um to deal with things you know regarding well what their position is going to entail um and a contractor is more like somebody who works on their own time when they feel like it um, versus, you know, the, sorry, there's a little man on my head. <laughs> um, I guess what I'm trying to say is there's a potential we could resolve this for the lawyer to be able to respond um, by saying, um, by clarifying employee or um, consultant and this is sounding more like it's going to be an employee than a consultant to me just my two cents thank you commissioner sheree any further discussion comments questions feedback thank you seeing that there are none may we move forward sure and i, I do think we'll it'll all circle together um, once this whole section is done um, but B, benefits for board members. Subsection, some point one, health insurance benefits shall be available to the, any board member during their term of service plus six months after the end of service uh, who was unable to obtain it due to hardship. Financial matters determined by board members. This shall be provided either by the state or local health authority, including the um, like in, insurance plan or um, federal insurance plan state provided premiums from the exchange. So point two, 
Health insurance shall also include dental and vision. Sub point three. Life and disability insurance shall be provided to all members of the board, regardless of hardship. Sub point four. Mental health support and services shall be provided free of charge to all board members and have access to state slash local employee assistance programs or other mental health service providers as determined by the board members. Sub point five, personal protection services, including bodyguards, shall be provided to all board members during all public meetings, travel to and from meetings and personal property and or residence as requested by the board member. You scroll down. Sub point six, shelter support services shall be provided to any board member needing such services during their term of service. And sub point seven, care services shall be provided for all members for child, adult, elder care, and other care services while attending public meetings and activities. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. That was a lot. Um, do we have any comments, feedback, questions, or need points of clarification? Co-Chair Obi. Um, you know, I, I think in a perfect world, this would, um, this would be great. Um, I think it's going to end up running into some financial issues as well as like this, this is the definition of an employee, you know, like health insurance, um, and like life dis disability and stuff like those benefits along with like retirement type stuff. And we did talk about mental health services before. And that is one thing that I think is going to be plastered on because this work is so demanding. But all of these things, including um, an hourly rate that matches the mayor, then makes the city of Portland employee. Um, I think it might, I don't want to trim down benefits for people, but I think this needs to be kind of made more vague and then referred to the whole committee um, to see what, or even like maybe in the next, seg next segment too, to see what is actually feasible because like these benefits start running up a lot, a lot of money for 20 different people, plus like some paper options as well. It ends up being a lot of the funds. Thank you, Co-Chair OB. Any further discussion? Any additional comments? Commissioner Sophia. You're on mute. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I, I I do understand the whole issues where we don't have, we have the unknowns, but at the same time, these board members are going to be Why? making some very serious decisions about people's Why? lives. And um, it is an extremely stressful job if it's done the way we envision it to be done and it's a lot of stress not only um mentally uh, not just physically but mentally um we're also trying to get a diverse group of people from all socioeconomic backgrounds to be able to comfortably participate not those who are comfortably retired um and have all the time we we really we want this to work. We have to support our board members in, in a way that shows that these these positions are very serious. And if we don't support the board members to be able to do this, our product will be less than what we would like, um, is my thoughts. Yeah. So that's my thoughts at the moment. Say thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sophia. Uh, may we move forward? Let's move forward. Thank you, Co Chair Obi. Okay. Um, so, C, right above, thank you. Um, C, service credit for state and or local government service employment shall be granted for board members' term of service. Terms shall count as local and state retirement service credit for retirement. Or towards, sorry, excuse me, towards retirement. Okay. 
Any comments? Feedback? Questions? Seeing that there are none, may we move forward? Oh, wait, yeah, so on. I see Commissioner Cherie. Um, just quickly uh, echoing what Obi said, um, I think this part here where it says service credit for state or local government employment shall be granted for board members team of service. Here we go down that road of employee again versus uh, contractor or, or anyway, here we go down that road. I'm seconding what you're saying, Obi, about this is. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. I mean, a question, maybe someone can answer it here. Like, do contractors for the city of Portland get anything in retirement that goes to PERS, like the, like the um, retirement system for city slash state employees? Because, like, if, you, if you're counting this, then that's definitely an employee at this point. And then, like, who are they? And if, it, if, if we go that route, right, and change what the charter has stated about the employment of these of this board to the city of Portland, maybe it's employed by someone else or whatever, um, you know, I, I, I think, I think some of the, it, it can work. It's just, I think we need to redo some of the things beforehand if this was to stay, because that's, that is, a, that is definitely an employee. Thank you, Co-Chair OB. Uh, Commissioner Sharif? I can't speak to City of Portland contractors, but I can speak to other contractors. And that is one of the big differences um, is that uh, uh, typically, well, in my background where I come from, a contractor doesn't get health insurance. They don't get, um, you know, paid leave or any kind of benefit like that. They get a fat paycheck and a thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Cherie, Commissioner Sophie. Sophia, sorry. I I, uh, I hear you. Yeah, and, and that's the difference, that all these um, benefits are financially given to them up front. Um, so um, I, I, it's like one of those things. I, I as, as I was writing these things up, I definitely understand all of your concerns. I thought about the same things, and I also said, if you don't ask for it, you don't get it. Um, so, you know, if we're squeamish about asking for stuff, we definitely won't get it. Um, and I just think this board is the, it is the starting point for police accountability in this country. And as we look at all of the past boards, we've looked at them and the success rates, even in the ones that we consider very successful, they always have these certain flaws and it has a lot to do with compensation. And um, if we're expected to make life-changing decisions for individuals, you should, you should be compensated for that. Not only the victims, but the police and everything else. Um, if you, if you don't treat it seriously um, from the beginning, um, it's not, you, you can't do that midstream, is all I'm saying. You, you're just not going to be able to do it again if it's not done up front. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sophia. Um, Commissioner Cameron? Yes, I'm, I'm wondering is who tells us that we don't have the money for this? If, you know, is there someone who goes, is there some point in this where someone goes, we can't do this, we can't offer all this, we can't all that. I mean, I I don't know, I don't get any of these benefits in my line of work. I, um, I, I'm a contractor most of the time. So um, all of this seems amazing, but I, you know, I, I don't know who's paying for it. Commissioner Obi, I mean, co-chair Obi. Yeah, I, know, I think staff is gonna make the point of like, like what's been deemed before, but like, I think the initial voting in said that this board is the floor of it is 5% of um, the the uh, police budget. Like, it's like, I think that that's the floor based on the minimum, you know, however city works is how they work on finding a number. Um, and that's a much higher number than the current system. Um, but now with like increased board members and then as the concurrent 
subcommittee that's working with the staff. It's like when you piece together all those and then like the budgets for things that we've talked about before and how they function, that total number is what's going to come into play too. So, I mean, like, I think it's kind of one of those future um, or like looking forward type of things where we definitely have to match this up with some of the other subcommittees and future work um, in regards to this. But thank you. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Staff? That is a really good question, Commissioner Cameron. And I think there's sort of a two-part answer to that. Um, when there are budget requests that are put in by a bureau to council is when they would, you know, there's a guaranteed minimum uh, of 5%, which using current police bureau budget uh, funding levels is about twelve and a half million dollars. That, if the PPB budget goes up or down, then that twelve point five million will go up or down as well. Um, but if if the request were to be more than that, then at least the portion more than that, the city council would weigh in and and respond to the oversight board and and staff saying you're not granted this money, and. Um, and that's sort of on the ongoing on an ongoing basis uh, after this uh, oversight board is set up. However, and this is the second part, it's if the city code is set up in such a way that council um, current council would predict that future councils might be forced to give more money than they would otherwise deliberate towards that might be a factor now for council looking at this proposal. Um, and that's not to say that this alone would do that uh, for the record. Um, and, but, but if just speaking very big picture, uh, I, I imagine that council now would be considering uh, if this is a, a viable thing in, in total, I, the more of the budget is being is, is likely to be spent on the in the other subcommittee that's that's still meeting, um, which is the uh, oversight staff, because some of what's required to have money spent on it is is staff. So uh, this is a different document. This is um, some of the reference material for the subcommittee on oversight staff. And it just includes two things. One is just the charter section. So it is required that there is administrative staff, this is the charter, it is required that there are investigators, and it's required that there is a director. Beyond that, you know, uh, the commission can decide, you know, what other types of staff, and there's a lot of other potential staff uh, needs, um, as well as contractors such as, um, right now, IPR contracts with a, um, a third party, the, it's currently the OIR group, to review deadly force incidents, deadly force incidents. That Cost money too. Um, and that is good. any other types of staff would add up mediators, advocates, and certainly compensation to the board uh, members is is there too. And so in the aggregate, that's sort of the, the big picture that the full commission should consider. Um, that's not to say you shouldn't do it. Just a, I think that's the that's the broader context. And the last thing I wanted to mention, the reason I picked this document instead of the actual charter is because at the bottom of this document, there's some. It's entitled notes to contemplate. This is not set in stone. It's it's sort of um, uh, math that the uh, the subcommittee on on officer accountability started and that oversight staff has has built upon. Um, which might give a little bit of an idea of like how the money um, might go and, and sort of what the workload is and things like that. It might be helpful to do a sort of back of envelope calculation for um, knowing the hourly rate is helpful, but knowing um, how many hours you're expecting a board member to work is the other half of that equation. Um, and so as not necessarily right now, but as you go through all of the um, responsibilities of a board member uh, in the last phase and, and all the, the the sort of uh, division of that by how many board members there are that might help know uh, to, to indicate how what what each potential compensation level might yield in terms of a budgetary impact. Um, it's not necessary to do all this math and have it right that the oversight board itself and the bureau director is going to be submitting the budget requests, but in terms of trying to come up with something that you think that council might support that might be a, an advantageous thing. Does that answer the question?
Thanks, staff. Um, Commissioner Sophia? Yes, I, I did put a, a little bit in the chat, um, but considering um, I know that everything costs money, um, but if, if we don't put in what we need, um, you can't ask for more money <laughs> if you can't prove that you need it. Um, so I think we should really go in being realistic um, about, yeah, it's, it's expensive. We're asking people to voluntarily do this for nothing, in most of these boards, uh, for zero. And, and this, is, this is a serious job being on a board. And um, I'm just asking everyone to consider if you were taking this as a paid job, how much do you think, I mean, would you do it for minimum wage? Um, you know what I mean? So let's just think of it realistically, um, cause it is a job. We want it to be done right. And we want people to have the tools and the resources to do it. So that's just a comment again. Thank you, um, Commissioner Sophia. Um, Deputy City Attorney um, Ames. Hi, I just wanted to say, you know, um, I'm willing to help you try to figure out how to, how and whether you can do whatever you want to do. Um, I would just point out a couple things. Um, you know, one, if you do end up being an employee, which the benefits are by city code and by state law, um, you know, the state runs the PERS system, the public employee retirement system, which every public employee, almost all public employees, in, including city of Portland, are subject to. So they they set the rules on who's an eligible PERS employee. So there's some things where you start getting into things that are way beyond the scope of the city council even to control when you, you know, some of these proposals would be very involved to carry out. Um, so that's just, you know, we can figure out what the bounds are, what you could do and what you, you know, can ask for without asking the city council to overrule state law. There's also pay equity laws. And so, um, you know, you can have a, you know, we'd like to pay them this much, um, you know, it had to be evaluated against other city employees at that point. Um, you know, there's also factors such as, you know, there is a lot of case law on um, vol volunteer firefighters who are not considered employees, but who get paid a set amount for every time they go out on call. And it's kind of designed to, you know, compensate them for their trouble and their work without being an employment related situation. So it's, you know, there's there's some there are some gray areas that we could, you know, explore in, in some of the laws, but this is a very complicated area. And I think, you know, we we can look into some of this, but I've got to say the benefits and the retirement benefits, um, some of the you know, hourly pay. Uh, it, it gets into trickiness. So um, yes, jury duty is another example that's been discussed by PAC members. Um, jury, if you've been on a jury or called to jury duty, the jury duty pay is um, not motivating. <laughs> so anyway, um, happy to happy to explore anything that uh, you all get via Samir to me to check into. Thank you, um, Deputy City Attorney Ames. Do we have any other comments, feedback, discussions, or have any questions before we move forward? Um, Commissioner Cameron. Yeah, I I wanted to with that I with the idea of jury duty getting paid kind of in in that way versus uh, being an employee with the benefits. What, does anyone have any ideas on a number that would motivate you to give up the health insurance and the benefits and the things like that? You know, I, I can't remember what my jury duty last was, but I feel like it was like $15. That was not enough. And being a board member, I, I, don't, I don't know, you know, 
a hundred dollars a you know a, a meeting or or whatever or five hundred dollars or or I mean does anyone have any ideas on numbers? Commissioner Sophia? Um, I don't have any ideas off the top of my head, but looking at it as a contractor, um, you know, I know for my, my where I work at, the contractors get paid pretty hefty prices with no benefits. And that's where I was going from um, last time. That contractors, their benefits are all wrapped up generally in their compensation as a one package deal. And I'm very open to considering, depending on what um, attorney Ames comes up with, to, to, to look at a different way. This is just my first thought. And um, um, I'm happy to, you know, take in other ideas. Thank you, um, Commissioner Sophia. Do we have any additional comments for the discussion? Um, Commissioner Angie. Thank you. Um, I just did want to say that um, I don't know if, I mean, I don't know if we would be able to do the the um, the analogy of. Uh, of jury pay because you know unless there's like some sort of document that I could take to my employer I don't think that they would you know I've I've told them um about how much work I do on this and they although they respect it very much it cannot interfere with my work <laughs> so um you know it's not I don't have a choice it's not like um it, they want to be good civic um civic um, employers, but, but um, I'm also, I also work for a company in Washington. So, you know, this isn't their, uh, even their jurisdiction. So I, I, I don't know how to frame this. And I do appreciate that we are thinking about it because um, God knows that if I was able to use some of the hours that I worked here, here for my work, that would have been great because there were some weeks that um, we were working on things and I didn't get any time off during that week, including the weekends. So, um, <clears throat> so um, I don't. I, I the mo monetary piece of it doesn't affect me quite as much because I, you know, I do feel like I have a com comfortable place in my life, um, and it's more of the the benefit side of it of being able to claim those hours or um, even, you know have some sort of other thing, you know, the stipend or whatnot, the, the, those fringe benefits would be much more valuable to somebody like me, I think. But um, that being said, I, I do think that we have to, we do have to figure out a way to compensate these people because it's a lot of work and um, we want to make sure we have people that are interested, so, and not burnt out. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Angie. Being mindful of the time, is it okay for us to move forward to the next section? Okay. Thank um, you, Co-Chair. Yeah, I'll read through um, just a few of these so we can get a full picture. So for okay. sub-point D, um, mm -hmm. leave, point D, leave of absence time shall be granted if needed during term for issues related to mental health. Point E, travel expenses. Board members, uh, sub-point one, board members, shall be reimbursed for travel related expenses during their term of service to include mileage per diem according to state and federal rates. Sub point two, local transit subsidy slash services including rideshare um, services to any board uh, member upon request. And uh, for F, the state protections for the oversight board, sorry, uh, <laughs> go, oversight board service. The oversight board shall be empowered to advocate to the state of Oregon for protections for oversight board members. These protections may include sub point one, the services provided by the board members being recognized by the state of Oregon as official services for excused absences from work as a service to the state slash local government akin to jury duty. Sub point two, the board members being protected from prohibited acts by employers against board members. 
Notice to board members, remedy for violations akin to ORS Chapter 10, ORS 10.090, prohibited acts by employers against jurors, notice to jurors, remedy for violations. And sub point three, board members being protected from unlawful employment practices regarding insurance, including if employers cease to provide health, disability, life, or other insurance coverage for an employee during times when the employee serves or is scheduled to serve on the board, akin to ORS 10.092, 1A, B, or 1A and B, uh, insurance coverage for employee during jury service unlawful employment practices. Thank you, uh, Co-Chair Obi. Do we have any comments, feedback, questions, or need point of clarification? That was a lot of information. Um, uh, Commissioner Sophia. Yes, um, I just wanna say, I understand this is a lot. <laughs> and um, looking into the jury duty, um, the way it's set up is my original thought, but I don't know how to do that either because we don't have jurisdiction over those types of things as Commissioner Angie was saying. Um, there's a lot to, to be thought through here. And um, yeah, I, I ask everyone to just sit back and take a deep breath, and think about this and hopefully um, if there's any any other suggestions? I I would love to have them. I I, I just know it's complicated, and um, I just didn't feel like there was any way around saying what we needed, except to say what we needed, um, and then see if we can do it. And try and figure that out, and, and um, whittle it through. So thanks, guys, for um, taking that deep breath uh, as we discuss these items. Okay, as we move, before we move forward into the next section, um, we'd like to take a few minutes to just give any general feedback on the conversation. Um, and then after that, we'll take a short break and then count, go into the next section. And then from there, we'll go into uh, public comments. So do we have any general discussion that we would like to go to? Uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Cameron? Yeah, on, on just this last section, um, I, I'm a freelancer. And so a lot of my work that I do is uh, contract based. And um, I can't, like, even for jury duty, I couldn't take a day off without just like canceling work. So I don't get any of this protection. I mean, uh, there there might be some points where I can, but it it's very rare. Like I I don't think I've taken a day off like that in at least a decade. Like I I can't miss work or I don't get it. You know, it's just kind of you know my choice to be employed or not. So um, I don't know this this. You know, if I if I was a board member and I had to show up for like a board meeting, I can't guarantee that without losing other work, I guess. I don't know. It, I, I just feel like I'd have to make some really big choices if I was choosing to be a board member here in my other employment. Thank you, Commissioner Cameron. Do we have any other um comments the floor is open for any general discussions around um, compensation at whole okay seeing that there are no hands raised at this moment um, we're going to go ahead and stop for a moment take a break take a couple of deep breaths um, and we'll come back in five minutes and we'll dive back into our next section. Thank you.
I think that was a much needed break. That was a heavy lift going through compensation. So we're gonna go on and moving to our next section, onboarding process and training. Awesome, thank you guys for coming back. Great, great discussions, great meeting. Let's continue forward, get through a lot of this. So onboarding process and training. Um, after a council appointment, new members and alternates shall go through both training organized by staff and peer training with more experienced members. So listed as 2.2, .2, but yeah. Um, training organized by staff may be delivered by staff and or by experts and affected parties. Topics shall include at a minimum city training app applicable to all members of city advisory groups, training on public meetings and public records law, training about the Portland Police Bureau, including history, training about the oversight board and staff, including history, training about the oversight board's internal structure, including its bylaws and other internal processes, training about civilian oversight of law enforcement, training about local history of over-policing, including geographically specific training, paperwork necessary to ensure access to city resources, including compensation and other support services. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Do we have any comments, feedback, questions, or needs points of point, point of clarification? Staff? Some quick clarification and context. Um, there was a really uh, relevant conversation on Monday at the other subcommittee, uh, which is meeting presently, the subcommittee on oversight staff. And uh, that's what this comment thread is over in the right side. It comes from that document. And so um, that might be helpful context to have is, is that there seemed to be a support over there as well as of the, the folks in, who drafted this text to having uh, a hybrid model. And so this is the first part of it. The second part we'll get to in the very next section. Just quick, quick context there. Thank you, staff, for that point of clarification. Do we have any other questions, comments, or feedback? Seeing that there are no hands raised, um, may we move forward? Sure, thank you, guys. Uh, thank you. Um, number three, peer training. Members shall be assigned to one or more current full board members for peer training. And subsection B, that oversight board shall establish a list of responsibilities and topics to be covered during peer training. Thank you, Coach. I'm going to go right into four okay, as well. Sure. Thank you. Uh, the oversight board shall review its own training structures and curriculum and is empowered to revise these on a regular basis. Thank you, Co Chair Obi. Do we have any comments? Feedback? Questions? Any points of clarification? Seeing that there are no hands raised, may we move forward? Thank you. Moving to the, uh, I guess, um, term lengths and renewability. Is that correct? Co chair Obi? Sorry, I muted myself while I'm saying this point. Um, there was a um proposed change um since we had already looked at this one so I, we should just discuss the proposed change too um members of the new oversight advisory board shall serve terms of what was three and now two years with option to serve a third year at the member's discretion um then i'm gonna read sub point two let me hopefully discuss this the oversight board will serve staggered terms New members can be onboarded by existing members. The work, of course, the work of existing members is not interrupted. Okay. Okay. Do we have any um, comments or feedback on this amendment on this change? Do we have any um, points of clarification? 
Um, Co-chair Obi. Yeah. Um, so we we looked at this when we talked about it last time about like what the appropriate length of the term would be. And one of the things that we keep harping on is the not survivability, the uh kind of the institutional knowledge of the board. And I think we like the slightly longer terms of three um as a set standard. Um I think two was suggested before by my co-chair, and then we discussed moving to three, but now we're just back discussing it too. Um, I know there's pros and cons to both, to any sort of increase or decrease in years. So just want to hear what you guys would say about two versus three this time around. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Angie? Thank you. Um, uh, I discussed this a little bit this afternoon, and I, ha I have been thinking about this. Actually, I wasn't at the previous meeting, but I have been reading over this. Um, I, uh, um, I it is a lot of work and um, a three year commitment is a chunk of change on, you know, it's an extra year beyond two years. I understand that. Um, however, I do feel like with the longer amount of time, um, I can step away and take my breath within with um, this commission in our 18 months. I feel like any time I am away, I am I'm. I am definitely detrimental to the, to the board or to the commission because we don't we have so little time to do everything that we need to do. So that's that's why I I support a longer term because I just I just feel like with these shorter terms it's it's going to put a lot of pressure every single time you meet um, on to accomplish something. So. Thank you, Commissioner Angie. Commissioner Sophia. Thank you. So um, I was suggesting the shorter term, um, looking as how I, you know, 18 months have been there from the beginning and just looking at my life, the commitment to do this for, you know, it's basically be two years. I mean, my, I mean, I can't, I, I have other things in life that I want to do. And to put those on hold or have to um, go around the meetings, right? To participate in some of these and that guilt, as she was saying, with not participating, it's a real pressure because um, you want to do well, you want to support the group. And, you know, three years out of my life, basing it on what I do for the commission or the board is a lot. I mean, you know, people have kids. I mean, there's just so many things that come up. And my thought was, if you make it for two years, because no one wants to really resign, <laughs> you know, even if you have to, it's just something about it because you feel like you're letting down your group. At least that's my, that's my point. Um, and I don't like doing it. So I don't want to make a commitment. Three-year commitment is a long time. And if, if this goes, this board does the work that we're proposing it to do, we're going to be, somebody's going to be really busy on that board. Um, so my whole thought is three years is a lot. If you give them two years um, uh, with the option to renew for one year, I think that allows people to decide themselves. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sophia. Um, now may we move to the next section? Could, is it okay? Can we move? Yeah, I, and then, then thank you, uh, Commissioner Sophia. Um, we'll definitely keep that in mind. The two plus one versus three, um, and move that move that along. I think that that's definitely a good point too. Um, I think we're gonna make a jump from this subsection so we can get everything I kind of read before next week's meeting. That's okay. Computation good. Rule server removal requirements. Um, this is one that we did beforehand um, for G. So this is my section. Um, looking back on it, I think uh, I we don't need to be super specific about it um, because we want to see how the board function, how it meets, and everything like that too. So there should be no totaling. Basically, what I what I would suggest for these lines is like when I say good cause for removal includes. Unexcused absences, and that's it. And then uh, excuse absences and deleting the totaling. So the board will have its own discretion to decide um, what percentage they want to use or what 
uh, absolute amount they want to use for um, removal if, if it comes to that. Thank you. Do we have a, um, a, any strong opposition to uh, co-chair Obi's recommendation? Okay. Do we have a general agreement? Okay. Thank you. Let's okay. move. Let's move forward. May we move forward? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we'll, of course, we'll uh, do the tidying and stuff later on, so it's presentable at our next meeting. But yeah, um, just being more vague. And now, yeah, if we could move forward, because there is one section we haven't done yet. And yes, internal. So H, and this is completely new, so I'll read it in full, and uh, we can discuss. And I think it's really helpful that we did the size of the board section now so it kind of can be in your head but uh h internal processes including quorum now subsection one and added on the oversight board is empowered to write its own bylaws covering anything not addressed in law um, any comments feedback questions uh... Do we have any strong opposition to this amendment of an addition? Do we have a general agreement? Thank you. May we move forward? Okay. Number two, when, con when discussing quorum for the new board, there are three thresholds to consider. Subsection one, um, when making decisions about procedures, protocols, or other decisions affecting the full board, quorum to hold a meeting shall be defined as a majority of seated members of the board. Um, subsection point one, a simple majority of those members present are needed to adopt a motion. And then subsection two, for adoption of bylaws and other significant matters, including proposed removal of members, the quorum shall be two thirds. Any comments, feedback, uh, points of clarification, staff? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that standard practice on, on the part, uh, I guess, 2AI. Two A one uh, is that the voting thresholds would be defined in the bylaws. Um, is is how the the previous subcommittees have approached that. Um, so just wanted to flag that uh, not the quorum, but the 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 percentage of the vote. So just wanted to mention that uh, for sort of context and consistency. Thank you, staff. Commissioner Sheree. Um, yeah, staff addressed the first part of what I was thinking of, but the second part of what I was thinking of, um, going back to that we want this board to maintain the utmost integrity, but what if there was a situation, like, let's just throw out a, a crazy scenario. Um, there's a high profile case, a person was dead via the police, it's during bad weather, not everybody can be present for a major decision, so a not great decision gets made. Um, my concern with not putting at least some shape of numbers here is that, um, that in an odd scenario, something, a really bad decision could be made. I'm thinking back to when the Federal Reserve Banking System was established, how they snuck off on Christmas Eve when everybody was off for the holidays and made their sneaky little decisions for something that really changed the world. And this is another thing that has a potential to really change the world. We need oversight. 
um, but we don't want board members sneaking off and doing shady things uh, during a holiday, during a snowstorm, during a, I don't know, another pandemic, a, some crisis event. Um, I'm suggesting that we try to put a number in there. I, I'm not saying we have to do this. I'm only making a suggestion. Thank you, Commissioner Angie. Co-Chair Obi. Sorry, I muted myself. Thank you um, to staff for writing um, kind of something that we thought about in, in access information last uh, last time ago. We did want to make the provision for some of these to be virtual when possible, or the possibility of having virtual access. Um, so some of some of those things definitely if it was a snowstorm. Hopefully, people can remain safe. As people in Portland know, snowstorms don't do well uh, in Portland here. But um, hopefully, members would have access virtually to the things that they need and would be have have access in a safe and secure manner. Um, definitely, yeah, I, we would definitely forward that consideration to um, about quorum and like what would happen if like things got very close or low or, or concerned. But you know, I guess the other side of the coin is like these are vetted board members who hopefully served and are in good standing too. Um, I would hope that the, the decisions that they make and that we that we will entrust in them as a city remain good one or remain like appropriate uh whether or not there's 13 people there or 25 people there thank you co-chair ob i um, want to apologize i i want to say commissioner sheree I made a mistake and referred to you as Commissioner Angie. So I'd like to apologize for that. So thank you for your comment, um, Commissioner Sheree. Now, um, do we have any other comments, a question, any points of clarification? Okay, let's, is it okay for us to move forward? Yeah. Yes, okay, thank you, let's move forward. So individual subcommittees, of the new board shall have a defined number of members with quorum defined as a majority of said subcommittee members. Um, I just noted that um, this sentence uh, does include panels because um, we are now making like true or using structural oversight's definition of subcommittees and panels um, too. Um, I'm not sure if we need to write that as well. I'm not sure I specifically put panel in the in any of these sentences. Yeah, but that's the only thing. Okay, thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Um, do we have any strong um, opposition to that friendly amendment to have a place to have a section for a panel quorum? Uh, do we have a general agreement for the friendly amendment to include panel quorum in this section? Thank you. Uh, may we move forward? Well, I think we made it to the end of the document. So it, the time is now 8.42 p.m. Oh, staff. Yeah, just a real quick note before we go on to next steps and the rest of the agenda. Um, there were a couple of items in the Q&A that just in the interest of transparency, I wanted to flag that they were members of the commission who are not members of the subcommittee and therefore were giving uh, through that method um, a couple particular notes that were added in to the, the um, uh, where to go, to the, uh, in the Q&A and were put into the uh, comments, some of which had collapsed because they're long comments. So just wanted to flag that in the interest of transparency, their, their fact check is sending references and things like that. 
And then um, the other thing uh, worth mentioning is um, that just, and I guess this might be a segue into next steps, if that's okay with you, uh, facilitator Kryn. Yeah, so uh, we'll we'll get the um, the document uh, ready to go for Monday, and the, what that'll include is incorporating all the edits that have been made in terms of accepting track changes and all that, but also getting the draft uh, agendas incorporated, just listed here so that they can be discussed, uh, moving everything that's noted as to move, and uh, flagging uh, the relevant things that were flagged for further discussion for the subcommittee. So you'll have a list of at least the known items that are yet to discuss so that you can enter the meeting on Monday thinking to yourself, we've got you know, five, uh, five items left to discuss and then you'll have an idea of the time management part of it, which might be different if it's five versus if it's 15. Um, and then lastly, we'll, we'll also communicate with the, um, the uh, city attorney's office to try and get as many answers as possible to the, I think there's just two legal questions that we flagged here, but one of them is obviously a fairly large one about what makes someone an employee versus a contractor. Um, I will mention that that everyone should really get um, familiar with the current text of the uh, compensation section. I think it's a safe assumption that that will be a large topic of conversation on um, at the last meeting on Monday or the next meeting on Monday. But also, if there's anything else in here that that you have proposed changes for, we'd love to see that submitted so that they can be shown in track changes. Other members can have a moment to look those over before the meeting and be prepared to discuss them. And then that those are able to be added to that list so that instead of it's five things we know of that are flagged for further discussion today, it's seven things, five we flagged and two that were proposed by email um, in between now and Monday. Um, any questions on any of that? Okay. And then the last thing that's, I guess, worth mentioning is, is also by Monday, and hopefully sooner than that, we'll get a, a better um, idea of if there is an opportunity for another meeting as needed without affecting the project plan uh, and the overall timeline of the phase. So we'll get that information out to subcommittee members and, and uh, of course, to co-chairs as well. Um, Co-chair Obi, did, did I miss anything? Does that work with for you? It definitely works. Um, I think, you know, getting getting a good look uh, this weekend and like making any sort of changes. We've gone through a lot of this twice now. I think a lot of it will go a bit easier. And then, of course, the financial section um, after discussion is probably going to be what's longest. So hopefully tailor our discussion and our order of our discussion to what we predict is going to be easy and hard. And then uh, move forward on Monday. Thank you. Coach. Uh, thank you and thank you staff for covering our next steps. Um, I want to like to thank our fellow commissioners who are participating in the QA Q and A field. Uh, now we're going to go into um, our general public comment. Um, let's see. I see that we have Commissioner Dan Handelman has his hand raised. Good evening, thank you. Can everybody hear me? Okay, great, thank you. Uh, I'm Dan Handelman, I use he, him pronouns. I'm a member of the um, commission and of the staff, uh, the oversight staff subcommittee where we've had some of the discussions you heard about today. Uh, so one of the things that I've been working on is uh, the overall budget and uh, it's very important to understand how much money we're offering to the commission, uh, to the board members, uh, and if, if if any of the benefits that were discussed tonight are going to be part of that for us to figure out, you know, roughly how many people we can suggest uh, be on the staff and what the staff should be trying to accomplish. So I'm hoping we can come to a consensus on that soon. Uh, my recollection, and I think I've been at every meeting, uh, I think staff could correct me if I'm wrong, of this commission that um, I've heard repeatedly that people wanted not to have a professional board, that we wanted to have volunteers who are close to the community and that they're not going to be paid as though they're full time. So I think there's a, a balance between making sure that people from different walks of life can be part of it and, you know, compensating people on the level of the mayor of the city of Portland and giving them health care and life insurance. I think there's got to be something in between there. Um, so, uh, and I really liked the original idea about uh, um, jury duty. I'm interested to find out more about 
why the city couldn't make its own rules that are similar to that. Uh, in terms of the size of the board, I, I, it might be good to put something in saying the board could be expanded to 30 to hear appeals would be beneficial. Um, that was the suggestion from long ago. If you're going to have a larger board for deadly force and other serious cases, it should have an odd number, not 10. Um, my suggestion would be nine. Right now, it goes up from five to seven at the police review board. Um, uh, I don't know. There, I have several things that I did put in the Q&A. I, I understand staff has tried to put them in there, but I have a lot of questions about where did the um, research come from for the uh, for the benefits. Um, and uh, but I, I looked at the um, the co compensation in other cities that we researched, and it's you know between like five thousand and uh, fifteen thousand dollars a year, um, which I think might be more in line. I mean, you know, and again. With inflation, we might want to think about a little bit more, but um, might be a little bit more in line about more of a volunteer board. Um, I also I, I recommend sticking with the three-year terms because it'll make it easier to figure out when those seats empty out instead of having it be optional third year that if the person wants to leave, then an alternate or a new person can be put into that seat on the third year, fill out the term like it's envisioned in the charter. Um, uh, and, and uh, it sounds to me like maybe the uh, vote thresholds went through tonight. My recollection staff is that the discussion was, let's leave the voting stuff up till this phase when we're talking about the board. Um, and some stuff can be left to the board itself to decide, but I think some of it should be uh, written in the city code so they have some guidance. Um, and one benefit I was thinking about based on your last discussion that I think would be reasonable is to make sure that all the board members have uh, access to virtual meetings so that they thank have you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, yeah, Dan. That is just finish my sentence. That they have uh, access to some kind of virtual device and uh, whatever internet or other access they need to get to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner um, Hanselman. Um, Commissioner Debbie? Hi, Debbie Ion. I'm one of the fellow, your fellow commissioners. Um, so first, I wanted to make sure that everybody was clear that that citation about Denver for uh, the qualifications for board members needing to have a background in investigations, audits, and case handling or whatever it was, it is not in my write-up. And um, so I, I hope that you um, cross that out because I think that we kind of want level-headed community members on this. They don't necessarily need to have a background in investigations to do a good job. They'll learn about that as they're on the board. Um, and then, uh, oh, you talked about places to go for outreach for uh, finding people to apply to be on the board and mention neighborhood associations, district coalitions, uh, police bureau, advisory committees. And glad that you uh, added the Office of Equity and Human Rights, but. I also think that you should think about um, community organizations like the Coalition of Communities of Color and other, you know, community-based organizations that are really inclusive. Um, also would suggest that I know the outreach coordinator for IPR is gone now, but if you look back in the, uh, the, and the, the monthly reports that the director did, uh, she would put in some of the places that she went to recruit people to apply for the CRC, and I felt like she had a lot of good success with that. Um, nominating committee, I think it's important to decide to figure out who's on the nominating committee and, and define that. If it's just people from the board, you're going to end up with a self-perpetuating group that's just ending up, you know, picking more people who they know instead of having a broader um group and I would encourage you to look at the IPR code. They have a pretty good process that they use to uh, get uh, select new CRC members. I think there needs to be a much bigger discussion about volunteer, whether this board is a volunteer or a city staff um, populated group. Um, I was quite persuaded by Yumi Delegato who comes to our meetings sometimes. He's the CRC vice chair, I forgot the title. And he talked about how he feels like the, our new board needs to be community members, volunteer community members, because otherwise he's concerned the public will not trust a group that essentially is connected to the city through the get, getting paid. Um, and then the last thing is the terms. Um, 
based on my observation of the citizen review committee over the years, it's kind of a complicated thing to learn about. And I feel like it's easier for people who've been on a while because they get the hang of it. And so I, I feel like two year terms is kind of short to be able to get you know enough enough experience to really do a good job and feel comfortable at it. So I would advocate for a three year terms renewable and um, I send some information on how the to to our the, your, this committee's um, co chairs about how the CRC IPR does it. They they allow people to actually do three year terms, two of them, and then they can do more if if they want and if they would uh, contribute to the diversity of the CRC. So that's those are my comments. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Iona. Is there any other uh, additional public comments? Um, on the issues that the subcommittee has discussed tonight? Or are there any community members that can tell their story about policing or police accountability? If there's any other um, members of the public that would like to share. Seeing that there are none, we're going to move forward and to our conclusion of tonight's meeting. Oops, I have Commissioner Sophia has her hand up. I was just gonna ask, can we read the comments from the public? Um, what's his name, Philip um, Chachka? Can we read those? Um, Co-chair, co would you, uh, yeah. is it okay? Um, yeah, no. Would um, like to share uh, the comments from the Q&A? For sure, yeah. Um, thank you for um, Bill uh, Chachka, I apologize if I say it wrong, um, for submitting these about an hour ago. Um, so what he stated in two segments was, the police always get salary increases and great benefits. It's important to look at budget issues, but also important to treat board members with respect. Um, there you go, sorry, it was wrecked by paying them and giving benefits if they're doing the work deserving of such benefits. Please don't shortchange board members when the oversight system is getting 5% of the police budget. Remember that Mayor Wheeler likes to laugh and joke about how much work the PAC is doing with such little pay. I believe that without good pay for future for the future board members, the city will have less respect for the work that they do and less sense of urgency to respond to requests and concerns. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi and um, Commissioner Sophia. And thank you, Philip, for your your question and comment in a Q&A. Now it is time for facilitators, coach, co-chair, and staff to summarize any items already brought up today, which didn't fit into today's agenda. We'll recap those items here and use them in developing future agendas. We won't be using this time to add new items not previously mentioned or to discuss any items, but we'll use this list to develop future agendas so these items can be addressed. Uh, Garden Plot um, co-facilitator, Dr. Ma Moses, do you have anything you would like to add to the Garden Plot? No, just the legal questions that were brought up this evening for staff to follow up on. Thank you, co-facilitator, Dr. Moses. That's a lot to say. <laughs> um, Co-chair Obi? Um, actually, Dr. Moses <laughs> nailed her in there. They said we need to discuss the, the legal oh, ramifications right. of a more and like different, getting different benefits and what makes an employee versus a contractor versus a volunteer ping in between the two. Thank you. Okay. We're doing really good on time. It is now 8.57. Uh, we would like to go into, uh, as a reminder, you can now submit. Oh. I'm sorry, oh. I'm sorry to interrupt. Staff. staff has his. Oh, I didn't see staff hands up. Staff? Yeah, so uh, just for the garden plot real quick, there's a, we, we scrolled by it uh, pretty uh, quickly and apologies on, on our, for that. Uh, but the um, sort of, uh, initial trainings that uh, sort of would replace when there are no peers 
um, to do training because there'll be no experienced members when the board starts. There was a segment on that that got removed because it was being put into the garden plot on how to do the initial round of training and substitute that. So that's a transition plan item along with possibly the voting threshold stuff that we talked about already, but definitely this training component. Um, sorry, you can continue on <laughs> uh, facilitator credit. Sorry. I apologize for not um, calling on staff. So now we will go to the adjournment of the meeting. As a reminder, you can now submit advanced public comment to the Police Accountability Commission via web form, voicemail, or postal mail. At this moment, we would like to thank you all to the members of the public who attended today's meeting and your contribution to today. Thank you to all of our interpreters. Finally, thank you to the members of the community for attending and contributing your thoughts and questions. If you, not, if you have not already signed up for email updates, please sign up to receive updates from the PAC. It is now 8.59 p.m. and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you, everyone. Peace.